Hello everyone. Today is for 31st of January 2019 and we are going to be discussing about the new CAP process, the new H1B CAP process. DHS announces final rule modifying H1B CAP filing and selection process today. And so we are going to discuss about is it really beneficial for the masters or the higher study people who came to US or is it not going to help them. So to give you a brief about it, Previously, how it used to work is very simple. We had a total number of whatever is the applicants. The seats which are selected for H1B cap are in total 85,000. Out of which 20,000 seats were allocated for masters or higher education students uh, who have done their masters from the United States of America. And the rest, however much the applications are remaining, used to go into the slot for 65,000. Now, the process how it was occurring is that the first preference was given to 20,000. So as soon as the master students are coming, they were first placed into the 20,000 category. And once that is filled, then and if they are not picked up in this 20,000, they were put into the 65,000 category where it was given the second preference. For the H1B cap, which is announced just today, which is 31st of January, we have the new rule where the numbers do not change, but the preferences in which they are coming changes. So as soon as um, anyone who applies for H1B uh, and is a master student or a higher education student who has studied in USA, the first preference is that he would be kept into the slot for 65,000. And then if he's not picked up here and the 65,000 slot is complete, then he would go into the slot for 20,000. So I'll give you more details and we have done some maths by ourselves to see if that is really true. And the reason we are doing this is that DHS while saying this has given us an estimation that technically the new rule is supposed to increase the chances of master students by 16%. So we are going to evaluate today and see if that's really the case or is it just a bluff that they are doing. So if you are interested, just keep on watching. So considering the previous statistics that we have discussed, um, let's see how much were the application numbers that went last year. So this is just a rough estimate that we got off the internet. So the total application number that happened last year was about 2 lakh, out of which um, we are estimating, and now this is not an accurate, so please don't consider it that way. But we are estimating, estimating that there were about 60,000 who were masters or higher students. And then the remaining, which is 1,40,000, were other categories. Now, these categories involve people who are working on H-1B visas, who directly come to the United States, etc. Saying that in percentages, if you consider this as 100%, then this becomes 33% of that and this becomes 66% of that, okay? Now coming to the criteria that I have given to you previously, as you see, the first preference was for masters and the second was for 65,000. So let's go based on that. So consider the first preference, which was for masters. Now the masters category, as you can see, is equal to 20,000. Okay, so now if you consider that there were 60,000 students who applied for H1B, out of that 20,000 would surely get it in the first plot. So if you subtract those 60,000 from 20,000, what remains is an amount of 40,000. Now these 40,000, now these are applied masters or higher. These are got and these are remaining. So these 40,000 would now go into the second preference, which is for others, where you have the slot for 65,000. So now 40,000 from the masters, which are remaining, plus the others, which is the total of 1,40,000, who would usually be apply and then that would total up to 180000 total others so out of this 60 so out of this total 180000 65000 would get it now how we are going to calculate this is very simple we are going to calculate how much amount of 40000 
is of 180,000. So if you calculate that, which I'm gonna, it comes around to 22%. And you can calculate, I have a calculator, but it's fairly simple, so you can calculate it. And once you see, you see that 22% out of the total 180,000 is basically, which is 40K of 180K is the population that is applying for this now considering that how much is the other population is of course minus that so 78 percent is 140k of 180k now out of these the total one like 80,000 as i have said only 65,000 people get the h1b visas so if we calculate based on that you take 22% of 65,000 and if you calculate this, it's basically 14,300. 14, so totally, if you want to say in this criteria, in the other preferences, 14,300 were masters or higher students and the remaining were basically others who came for work. So if you total up here, you have 20,000 who already got into the masters or higher education plus 14,300 who have got into the others criteria. So total upping 34,300 students got H1B visa from the amount which was 60,000 who applied and then these were the people. So if you take this into percentages, it technically becomes 57% got H1B who were masters or higher. And how this number came is? This number is 34,300 of 60,000. And then 43% did not get H1B for masters or higher education. Now, hopefully this is very clear to you guys. It's not very difficult maths, but I'm going to also show you now in a similar method for the new one that we have. So predicted. comparing coming now to the new system that Trump has proposed just today, we're going to go with a similar approach. We have a total of 85K uh, slots available out of which 20,000 is for masters and 65,000 is for others. Now for our prediction methods, we are using the same number of applications that we have used in the previous one where we are estimating 2 lakh applicants will be will apply uh, out of which 60,000 will be for masters and then 1 lakh 40,000 would be for others which is 33 and 66 percent. So now here is the change. The first preference is going to go for others which is technically 65,000 now. Now we are going to calculate this in a similar way. Now out of the 65,000, if you see the statistics here, considering that 2 lakh is 100 and 60% is 33, we are going to say that 33% um, of 65,000 is going to be 21,450. So, Considering this is like a fair number of lucky draw, we are estimating that 33%, which is the total number of applicants which are for masters, out of that the 65,000, which is the slot for the others. So 21,450 of masters or other, masters or higher education actually, have got H1B. Now, if you consider the total amounts who have applied was 60,000. Applied for masters or higher minus we are getting 21,450 who have got so remaining for us is actually 38,550 now this is very fair because they would go into second preference which is masters the slot which occupies 20,000 currently so out of these if everybody's masters they have to get here Right? So if we are considering 38,550 minus 20,000, that leaves us with 18,550. So summing it up out of 
60,000 which was the total number of applicants for master in total you have this 20,000 plus this 21,400 so this and this equals 41,450 so 41,450 got H1B right so if you take this so 41450 of 60k which estimates up to 69 percent got h1b and if you remove that from 100 of course you have 31 person who did not get h1b so if you see and if you compare the previous one with the new one in the previous one for the masters or higher you had 57 percent of people who got h1b and in the new one you have 69 percent so per our calculations which are just estimations again we do not have accurate numbers so we cannot give you accurate results but if you see here fairly definitely there is an increase by 12 percent and considering that this could be plus or minus and there could be many factors that could affect so this is just in rough estimation giving you an idea that this is not a rule which is a bad rule or it's actually helpful for us and and also another thing that i would like to mention in this video is that there is also another process that trump has changed and which is earlier when filing for an h1b cap the lawyer had to give the complete package to uscis considering that he has to give a complete package he definitely has to have all the documentation and everything but now since the process has changed he does not have to give complete package to ui uscis while submitting the application but he just have to give um a pre uh forms or some kind of uh forms that they have over there but it's not complete and only once the applicant has been selected they ask the lawyer to give a complete form of applicants or application complete packet or as we say so that also increases the chance that since they don't have to give everything it may also increase the number of applications because people do not have to provide all the information and that reduces from their work and from their filing and everything so that may also increase the number of applications so that is just one of the thing that i would like to put it put it out there but other than that if you see fairly um i think it looks good and then let me know what do you guys think of this video thank you so much for watching